know, when you read a script and it makes you laugh out loud, especially when the character that you're looking to play makes you laugh out loud, at least for me anyway, it's, it's, it's a really good indicator of something that you inevitably do want to do. I read it, I flipped out, and I told my, I told my, my reps that, um, you know, in my hiatus, this was the project I wanted to work on. I was very adamant about it, very passionate about it. You know, Fiona, I was drawn to her immediately. Um, I call her a sun seeker. She's one of those people who, all right, it's not sunny here, I'm leaving. I'm going to find sun. She's just one of those people that you want to be around. You're drawn to her. She's funny. She's kind of quirky. Um, but she's lovable, and she, she's very bright. And she's also got, you know, she's a little bit of a bird with a broken wing. There's a little bit of a history there with her and running and escaping things and needing to go find the sun. Um, and I just wanted to, there's a lot of me in her and there's a lot of her in me and lately she's taken my credit card and done lots of shopping so I've turned into Fiona. Uh, after reading the script I went nuts. You know I wanted Lyman, I knew that um, and Amanda called the people in California, called my agents and said you know let's get this meeting set up so I went and met with them. I uh, read with them. Um, the amazing thing was with Margaret and the producers, uh, we had like a 30 minute conversation about the character and about the project itself before I even got into actually reading anything. And then, um, you know, I kind of felt like it was a, just a, a divine connection. My first impressions of Lyman, you know, that strong, silent type, I thought, yeah, Fiona would, would be drawn to someone like this and I could see her sort of skulking around and looking at him before he'd ever met her and he was something someone that I thought a person with her kind of you know bon vivant sort of life would would look look to find so I thought they were well matched. Growing up I didn't really know people like Lyman and that's why in my research and kind of building Lyman's world I went out and uh, met with people who had kind of gone through a similar situation growing up and um, it was tough to be honest to sit down with these people and um, not just, you know, listen and identify with them, but to kind of become them. Yes, the, his sort of shy, kind of quiet, um, secretive, uh, non-communicative. I mean, I'm sure a lot of women would say, I've met a guy like that. But the underlying history of his life obviously creates who he is as someone who was abandoned, never knew his family, never knew his name, never knew his birthday. I think, I think that in and of itself breeds an individual that very few people have probably had the fortune to come across. Everybody coming in says, you know, you watch out for working with animals, you watch out for working with kids. But to tell you the truth, it's been pretty easy working with these animals, easier than working with some adults, to be honest. I do love Fiona, and I do love Lyman, and it's kind of the two of us in it together, and, and Jackson and I get along so well, and yes, the early mornings aren't my favorite, but the, everything from the food to the house I live in, to the car I drive, to the people I work with, has all been wonderful.